When you define a class, you are establishing a new data type, and you give that data type capabilities by defining methods on it, like we saw in the previous videos. When you have objects of that type, you can call those methods to make use of its capabilities and carry out operations on it. But there are some data types where you'd really like to have a more concise way of carrying out operations. Let's, let me be a little bit more specific about this with an example. So to continue with our previous example, where we're imagining the idea of a point in a Cartesian coordinate system, where we've got a point A and a point B, and A is at say one, two, we have this method call that we looked at in the previous video, a.scale, where we're saying A object, I am asking you to call the scale method, and here's this extra bit of information, 2.0, that's the factor I want you to scale your coordinates by, and give me back a new point object that we're gonna say B is assigned a reference to that. So A remains unchanged and was not mutated in this process, and B is now going to refer to this point that is you know, A's coordinates by two, multiplied by two. Now, if we were mathematicians, we would probably be a little bit uh, perplexed by having to write out a method call in this way. It would feel much more natural to be able to say a multiplied by 2.0. The problem is this multiplication operator is defined by the Python programming language. So we would need a way to tell Python and, and this A is a type that we defined and Python had no idea was going to ever exist when, when the Python language was invented. There's no, no notion that we would invent a point class in the exact way that we did. So there must need to be a way, if this is going to work, and it turns out it can through a, con, a, a concept called operator overloading. And what we mean by overloading is, well, this multiplication symbol has a specific meaning by default when you're working with two numbers, right? You're multiplying them. But we're gonna overload additional meaning into that operator by adding some capabilities to our point class such that Python knows, oh, you're trying to multiply a point by something else? Well, if you follow some convention and in your point class you define a special method with a special name, we'll be sure to call that on your behalf so that this syntax will work out and this will be valid, a valid expression. So let's go look at how we can add this special method such that rather than you know, calling a method like scale, we can actually use the multiplication operator with our point objects. So we're gonna continue with the example that we left off with in the previous video where we've got a class point, it's got two attributes. Um, this time around, I'm only focusing in on the implementation of a scale method that doesn't mutate the object that it was called on. It's returning a brand new point object, right? And just to sort of refresh and jog our memories on this, um, but also to simplify this method down a little bit because we, we broke this into a multi-step process where it didn't really need to be, right? So in order to scale a point, what we did was we said, take the, uh, the X attribute of the point you called this method on. So this method was called down on line 27. So a.scale, we were talking about a is gonna be self, and factor is gonna be 2.0. So a's x was one, so one times two was two. We stored that in a local variable. Uh, y was two by two is four, stored that in a local variable. Then we set up another variable for the point that's the new point, that's the result of this scaling. And then we returned that point or a reference to it. Well, we didn't have to break this down into three steps. And because we're about to have to rewrite this logic using operator overloading, uh, let's go ahead and bring this down to a single line. So I'm just going to return a new point object. And remember your arguments can be expressions. So uh, here we can say self.x multiplied by factor and self.y multiplied by factor. So those are the same expressions we had before, but rather than storing their results in a local variable, we're just using them directly as the argument expressions here. All right, and so if we wanted to convince ourselves that this works, I can run this program and we see that B is two, four. Great. So now let's add the ability to actually rewrite this line as A multiplied by 2.0. And this is what we're really going for, right? Notice we've got an error and it says the operator asterisk or multiplication is not supported for the types point and float. And notice that it's specifically putting point first because A's type is point, 
and A is the left-hand side of this multiplication operator. And the right-hand side, its type was float. So you can't multiply point and float. We need to tell Python, if you're trying to multiply a point by a float, here's how you do so. Well, we need to implement a special method or what we think of as a magic method because it will be called automatically in the background when this expression is evaluated. Before we do that, I want to mention and highlight and emphasize we have the scale function already defined, or sorry, the scale method already defined, and this doesn't work. So even though this method does exactly what we want to happen in this instance, the Python language isn't going to go out of its way to try and leap to that conclusion. It's, it's, it's rarely, it's in fact, never going to leap to conclusions. It's going to have a process at play for knowing what happens when you multiply a point by a number. And in order to give meaning to this expression, we need to define a method with a special name, and that name will be mul, for sh uh, short for multiplication. Just like this, it's going to be exactly the same as the scale method otherwise. So self, uh, we can name this factor for now, float, returns a point, right? And I'm going to add as our doc string here, um, overload the multiplication operator for a point multiplied by a float. Right? And we're going to return the same expression, a new point where the x parameter or the x argument is self.x times factor and self.y times factor for the y argument. All right. Notice now, once you've defined this mole method, again, this is a special method, and we know that because of the double underscore. So this is Python saying, hey, we're assigning special meaning to this name, and we've decided by a convention that if you define a method named mole in a class, uh, when you use an object of that type on the left-hand side of the multiplication operator, we will know to call that method on your behalf. And so A is going to be assigned a reference to whatever A refers to will be assigned to self, and then 2.0 will be this factor, or the right-hand side is going to get passed in automatically. And so why we call these magic methods is, and, and why we say this is an automagical function call or a method call is because it doesn't look like a method call is happening here, but sure enough, we'll see that if I tried to run this program now, it still works just the same, right? And so we can actually get rid of that scale method if we wanted, so that there's only one way to scale a point by some other factor, and that's by, uh, in our program here, using the asterisk, right? Uh, if we wanted to convince ourselves that this method call was happening and there wasn't any other funny business going on, uh, we could print mole was called and try running this again. And sure enough, mole was called and then we printed A and B, right? So mole was called at the evaluation of this expression and then A and B are printed. So if we can multiply a point by some scaling factor, could we add two points together? And this is a pretty common occurrence in Cartesian coordinates, the idea of adding two points. Uh, and so if A is 1, 2, and B is, so we want to we use addition for B, which is 2, 4, you, know, you add the components together and you would expect 3, 6 here, right? And maybe we'll assign this to C. So we'd like to be able to write an expression such as A plus B, where both A and B are point objects. Well, with operator overloading, we can actually make that work. But before we do this, let's just prove to ourselves that Python has no clue what it wants us to, or what we mean by this, before we define what we mean using an operator overload. So here, A plus B, the operator addition is not supported for the types point and point. Okay, well, let's go try adding the uh, add operator for addition and self, and here I'm going to use a more conventional name for our second parameter, which is right-hand side. And in this case, what is A's type? Well, A is a point. What is B's type? B is a point. So we're trying to make it possible to add two points together. So the right-hand side of this expression is also going to be a point. And this is also going to return a point. We're not going to mutate A or B. That would be unexpected and surprising. And when you're using operator overloads, you want to go out of your way to be as 
to, not, to avoid surprise. Surprise is bad when you're using operator overload. So you want to make it as obvious as possible what you would expect to happen if you do make use of this feature. So uh, for good measure, we can just print mol, uh, add was called, and we'll remove these in just a moment. But this is a good, uh, good example of just using prints as debugging statements to, to show us that, that our code is being evaluated in a very logical way. And we're going to return a new point object where self x is added to rhs.x and self.y is added to rhs.y. And if we pause and think about this, this is exactly what we did you know, on the blackboard, right? We, we added the x's together first, we added the y's together next, and then we called that a point. Uh, and so that's what we're doing here. Notice once we defined this special method, the error around the expression where we were adding two points together went away. So we can try seeing if this works. And I think I need to add a print statement for C. Sure enough, I do. So let's go ahead and add print f string C is, and then we'll use C as a string and see what happens here. All right, so we run this again and C is three, six. So we successfully added the addition operator to our data type point. And that's pretty cool. As we just saw like 10 minutes ago, there was no meaning to the point uh, class when, when you use it in an addition expression, but we just added that capability to this class and to all objects of that data type. So you're probably wondering, well, what other operators can you work with? And it turns out most of them. Uh, we're not gonna go into all of them. There is gonna be one more demo here in just a moment. Um, but just to show you very quickly, you know, the Python documentation has all of the special methods that you can implement to overload some of these operators. So your usual suspects, addition, subtraction, multiplication, uh, you get the modulus operator raised to the power of, uh, and then some others that we haven't fully explored, but you know, they talk about these down uh, in, in the comments. But you also have other things like uh, greater than, less than, less than or equal to, equal to, not equal to, so if we wanted to define what it means for two points to be equal to one another, and we would need to in a case like this, uh, we, we, we could implement our own method that's named equal, and then we could use the uh, double equal symbol with two points and, and have that make sense and actually work out. So the next thing I wanna just give you a quick demonstration of is, well, what about subscription notation? What if we wanted to be able to access, you know, uh, a subscription zero, right? Right now, we couldn't do that. We'll see that that makes an error. Right now, all we can do is say, you know, a dot x. Well, what if we wanted a dot x to also be accessible by a subscription zero? Because for whatever reason, we wanted to use integers to refer to our uh, dimensions, x and y. And maybe, you know, rather than a dot y, or in addition to a dot y, we wanted to be able to use a one to access the y. Um, attribute. Now I want to preface this with this is probably not a great design idea. This is probably an example of, uh, unless you had a very specific need for this, this is probably something you shouldn't do. But just to demonstrate uh, how this operator overload works, let's give it a shot. So let's try printing a sub zero, right? And printing a sub one. And what you'll notice right off the bat is like, hey, you can't use subscription notation on a point object. That doesn't make any sense. So you look at the error and it tells you that there's a get item method that's a special method that's the operator overload for this subscription notation that's not defined yet. Well, let's define it. So def get item, where self is the first parameter. As you're seeing, every method has self uh, as, its, as its first parameter when we're defining methods that work in terms of the objects. And then we're gonna have the index as the second parameter, which is gonna be an integer. And we will return, in this case, a float because we're gonna return, if you ask for index zero, we'll say that means the same thing as the X attribute and one, the same thing as the Y. So we can make this a really silly implementation. You know, if index is zero, return self.x elif index is one, return self.y. Else return, actually else raise index error, right? So 
If you ask for anything other than zero or one, we're gonna give you an error. Otherwise, if you ask for index zero, we expect you can expect to get X back and, and Y back. So um, I might add a doc string here that says uh, overload the subscription notation. All right. And so we can go see if this works, all right? So I'm gonna clear my screen here. Uh, and let me see if I can get all this, there we go, all on one screen. And sure enough, A is X is one, A is Y is two. When we printed A sub zero, we got one, and A sub one, we got two. This ability to add special methods to your data types, like multiplication, add, and get item, is a real superpower. And it's something that as you're getting started with object-oriented programming, you're probably not going to be doing a whole lot of on your own. We will see in an upcoming exercise that we're gonna make use of this to start modeling uh, a very specific concept that's very popular out in the real world. Um, but it's very valuable to know how this works uh, behind the scenes because so many libraries in the Python ecosystem make use of these capabilities. And the first time you see like one object added to another object or subscription not notation on something that isn't a list or a string, you're thinking like, what, what's going on here? What does this even actually mean? Well, the libraries get to decide what it means. And for the most part, any popular library you're going to use is going to choose to use operator overloading in a very responsible and um, in a meaningful and, and valuable way. Why this is so powerful is because look at how nice and concise this is. Uh, for problems where operator overloading you know, gives you a more direct way of expressing exactly what it is that you're trying to do, like here, scale a point by some factor, it's pretty beautiful and leads to more concise code. Uh, but again, most of the functionality that you build into your classes when you're modeling real world problems or you're writing apps or you're making web applications is you're, you're gonna be working in terms of methods. 95% of the work that you do when you're writing classes, uh, if not more than that, will be implementing methods and calling methods. But there are some cases where it's just really handy and powerful to be able to say, you know what, I wanna make this object, I wanna make any, any object of this class work with the multiplication operator or work with the subscription notation. Having that control can lead to some really exciting results. In the next exercise, we're actually gonna use this to uh, reproduce a very popular library's uh, uh, implementations here and to do some uh, statistical and arithmetic computing uh, that makes use of these symbols such as multiplication, addition, and subscription in order to give us a better way of working with our data and writing our code than uh, having to use method calls every step of the way. Not every language has operator overloading. Uh, Python does, there are others that do as well. Uh, and those that do, when they use it in the right way, are really, really fun to program in.